Hello, I'm Piotr Mowizrovnovic, and this is building a branded styling DSL in TypeScript. Uh, okay, I'm going to ask, can everybody hear me and uh, can you see a screen just before I start? Yes, we can hear you, we can see your screen. Awesome. All right. Uh, so, I'm going to start with a story. Uh, every good story needs to have a hero and a villain. The hero of our story will be TypeScript. Obviously, that's what we're here for. And a CSS in JS library I was lucky to contribute to. The villain of my story is a hyperbolized version of a designer I may have happened to work with. Let's call him Sergey. Sergey is a typical UI UX designer. Imagine him. Um, Pretty serious guy, although he, he likes his fashionable streetwear. Thick Russian accent. He looks more or less like this. The story starts when Sergei declared that there is no hot pink, there is no light blue, and uh, there is no such value as six pixels. Sergei was responsible for uh, the look and feel of the app we are building. And to keep a consistent brand, he destroyed colors. Sergey has a, such a power like this, right? And I, I mean it. If I deviate from his style guide, he's going to see it because he has pixel perfect vision. And he's going to call me on Slack and tell me, Piotr, this is entirely messed up. So I don't want to make Sergey angry because uh, I like to have good relations with my colleagues. And especially since this is a bug, right? So we can deploy it. I did make, uh, make Sergey angry once or twice, maybe. Later, I realized that we are partaking in constant base design, but I have CSS to uh, describe how my app looks like. CSS is a domain specific language for styling websites and web applications. However, it is not a, a domain specific language for styling my application on my brand for my designer. CSS doesn't really help me a lot. I, I need something here. I need a DSL maybe. I need a smaller language, something that will disallow me to make Sergey angry. Something that will, maybe it won't build, maybe it will show me some warnings whenever I'm tired and I'm doing mistakes. I am a, as many of you probably, a big fan of making illegal states unrepresentable. CSS doesn't have anything to help me here. I will need something more to uh, make Sergey stop being angry so we can become friends and move on. So I mentioned that CSS is a domain specific language. What is a domain specific language? It's a language that, as defined, is destined to do one thing well, just one thing. You only describe how things look like in CSS. OK, there is some Boolean logic, but that's like for code pen. That's uh, for jokes. You generally use CSS just to describe how things look like. TypeScript, on the other hand, or JavaScript, uh, general purpose programming languages. Uh, this is the other end, end of the spectrum uh, to, to domain specific languages. You can write backend in TypeScript, you can write web apps in TypeScript, uh, you can make a block or maybe compile it to a web assembly and even run it natively on your machines. So as I mentioned, 
I need something less than CSS or something more. I need something more focused. I need something smaller. CSS is a language for styling, but not for my style guide. DSL might be a scary word, scary term, but you are using a lot of domain-specific languages on a daily basis. Uh, React and jQuery are good examples of embedded domain-specific languages. Uh, I have found it on Wikipedia, so this is entirely true, and we trust Wikipedia, right? Maybe this is the direction I can move towards to, because, hey, languages, but these are just JavaScript libraries, right? So maybe I can use a part of general purpose programming language and declare it to be my language. This small subset of TypeScript will now be my DSL for building my web app. All right, so React's DSL and I'm often using Emotion. Emotion is also a DSL, right? I can use this object literals in TypeScript. They map one-to-one -to, -one to CSS, right? With becomes, with height becomes height. Camel case becomes a kebab case. And everything is still pretty simple. Here, I'm using a object with a tablet property, but this is just a media query. So we're still in CSS, right? We're just writing it another way to solve some problems like uh, cascade. And so we don't have to you know, name our classes and we don't have any problems with global namespace. We could use BEM, BEM, but we're using uh, emotion, so we can just handle it from JavaScript. However, it, it doesn't help me really. I mean, all right, I could just define some variables here. I can say that constant team is an object and it has my colors and list only the colors that Sergey approved here. But it's still not enough for me. I can still make errors here. I can still specify arbitrary values. Siri is a strict guy, so I want to be stricter in my code. Fortunately, TypeScript is quite good for it. Uh, I have defined this team, but I can use it in a conventional manner. I can use Team UI. Team UI is a library that builds on top of Emotion and lets you provide a team which looks like this three potatoes. Uh, it contains scales, which are just uh, arrays or dictionaries of these and tokens, as I previously wrote uh, blue to zero, zero F. It can contain variants, which are just sets of styles you can apply to your components. And of course, it contains components. It's a React library. So you define component uh, styles for your components there. All right, so how does it look like? Uh, wow, that's pretty nice, right? I'm not really writing CSS anymore, right? I can use this design tokens as first class citizens. I could previously, uh, I could have used a function here in a motion. Let me go back. And I could have said that team maps into team colors blue. But this is a bit clunky and I want to prefer using predefined values over defining arbitrary values. Right here, defining an arbitrary value is easier than uh, reusing a predefined, predefined value from context. So, uh, Team UI has a, its own JSX pragma, and the only thing uh, that's done by this JSX pragma is mapping 
design tokens uh, into the values from the team. And also, hey, you can notice here, it's, it's a tuple here. And this is size. So size is an alias for width and height. And this tuple here is a responsive tuple. Instead of writing media query, I can just say that size is on mobiles small and on uh, tablets and bigger is medium. Whereas this small and medium are values from my team. All right. So notice that we were writing SX instead of CSS. We're not in CSS land anymore. This is another API that produces CSS as an end result, but it's not CSS uh, when you write it. This is pretty interesting because already after adding two layers of libraries, we have something resembling another language. We are not over the rainbow yet. Uh, we can still make typos here and we can still specify arbitrary values because TeamUI is, uh, it was designed as a JavaScript library. And this is, by the way, really useful for prototyping. And obviously CSS doesn't help us because you can specify arbitrary values in CSS. You can have stuff defined globally. We don't want it right now. I don't want this typo. I want to avoid this arbitrary value because Sergey will yell at me. I would like to tell Team UI or another CSS and JS library about my specific team, about my type. If only I could do this. Okay, so. I could use module augmentation, right? I can import something and I can declare a module with the same name. And here I can say that, let's say A is a number. Wow, I imported A. Module augmentation is useful when you're patching libraries which have incorrect types, but we can use it here. We can abuse it a little bit to uh, get something really powerful. Another thing we need is declaration merging. So in TypeScript, I can define an interface more than one time. And here you can see that I have both A and B in this interface. What leads us to declaration merging in uh, augmented module. I can augment this module and I know that there is an interface user in here. I can add anything to it, right? Here, this say hi is just my addition. It makes no sense uh, in the library. So I can define my team uh, with a simple utility function. This is assignable to the team from Team UI. And I would like still to be assignable, right? So I can have autocomplete here, but I don't want it to be typed as team. I would like it to be narrowed to this exact shape here. I could leave it without annotation, but right now I have no autocomplete. So I've defined a simple utility function. This is just an identity. If you're compiling your code with Clojure compiler, uh, this should get stripped. 
you give it a T, which is a subtype of the team. That's how we get autocomplete here. And it returns the T. So we don't have the team, we have our exact value. The stimulus is pretty, pretty easy, pretty simple. We have a scale of grays, and we have, because we have a lot of them in our app. We have the primary color for buttons, a text color, and a background color, and a configuration for dark mode. And here, if I extract the type of this team, and if I use declaration merging and module augmentation to make user team extend my team, the law of demos, it worked previously. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I can have these type errors. Let me just import the team from team UI CSS. Or actually import CSS. And right now I have uh, used module augmentation to expand this user team. And here, let me check team colors is right now entirely broken. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to send you a, uh, a link. Oh, I actually have a GIF. Before we go, before we say thank you, let me screen share it another time. Uh, I had this. Let me just. Okay. Um, can I screen share girl? Thank you. Okay. Uh, so module aug augmentation is pretty tricky uh, because if you're re-exporting this interface, you have to augment it in a correct place. So here it is a screenshot of this exact same example and a proof that it worked for me. Uh, and a nice GIF of the API you can get if you're using a library like this. All right, that should finish my talk. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was Piotr Kondizorinovich, and this was almost good. <laughs>